This is the year of mounting up. Yes. I say this is the year of mounting up. Yes. And I declare from the beginning of this day yes. that you are going higher than where you are. Yes. I said you are going higher than where you are. Yes. In the name of Jesus. Jesus name. I said in the name of Jesus. In Jesus name. Hallelujah. Yes. As we are still standing, you are blessed. Amen. Somebody say we are blessed. We are blessed. blessed. To have one of us. Somebody say to have one of us. To have oh. one of us. I want us to put our hands together and welcome Reverend Daniel Kishana to come oh. and yeah. give us the word for the year. Thank you, Daniel. Yeah. You're welcome. Yeah. Hallelujah. You're welcome. You're welcome. Thank you, Jesus. I want us to lift up our hands and just take a moment and thank God for this new year that he has caused us to come into. Everyone, open up your mouth and just take a moment right now. Take a moment, take a moment. Begin to thank God for this new year that he has given to us. What a blessing, what a blessing. Father, you are mighty. You are worthy of our praise. You are worthy of our adoration. Lord, we give you glory. Lord, we give you honor. That compares to you, Jesus. None compares to you, Jesus. Father, we worship you, Lord. Father, we worship you, Jesus. We exalt your holy name. We exalt your holy name. Lord, we worship you, my Father. We worship you, Jesus. Lord, you are my Son. You are worthy of our worship. You are worthy of our praise. With a grateful heart, we bless you for this new year. We bless you. We bless you for this new year. 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 We bless you, we bless you for this new year. We bless you for this new year. We thank you that it is you who has crossed us over from 2020 into 2021. And we give you praise. We bless you. We glorify you. We adore you. We say you are worthy to be exalted and to be magnified. Hallelujah. Begin to speak in tongues wherever you are. Begin to speak in tongues wherever you are. Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, we welcome you. We welcome you, we welcome you, we welcome you. We welcome you, we welcome you. We welcome you in this service. We welcome you in this service. We welcome you in this service. We welcome you in this new year. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, come into our lives. Come into our lives. Come into our lives. Holy Ghost, we welcome you. We bless you. We glorify you. Something is happening as you pray. 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 Begin to pray. Begin to pray. That in this year, the spirit of the living God is going to lead you. The spirit of the living God is going to lead you. The spirit of the living God is going to lead you. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. We bless you, Lord. We bless you, Lord. We bless you, Lord. We bless you, Lord. We bless you. Glory be to your name. Hallelujah. 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 We thank you, Father, for your presence. Thank you, Lord. We thank you for your Holy Spirit. We pray that as you look at your word, you'll speak to us. We pray that this year, your spirit will lead us. And we thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. And amen. everyone say amen. Amen. Let's clap our hands and celebrate the presence of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Let's lift our hands above our heads and celebrate the presence of the Lord. Sit 
seated in the presence of God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you so much, our worship team. I'll have you a little bit later. Amen and amen. Look at the pastor next to you. Don't touch them. Don't high-five them. But just tell them, Happy New Year. And the one on the other side as well, tell them, Happy New Year. Amen and amen. I want to thank God for the opportunity to share the word of God with us in this first service of the year 2021. I thank God for our bishop and our dear mom. May the Lord bless them. I also want to honor and appreciate Reverend Meshach together with our mom, Reverend Immaculate, and the pastoral team in the house. I honor you. I salute you. May the Lord richly bless you. Amen. Are you ready for the word of God? Are you ready for the word of God? This year has already been declared to be the year of mounting up. If you're looking for a prophetic word for the year 2021, every one of us in Deliverance Church across this country, the word that we have from the servant of God, our presiding bishop, Bishop Makariuki, is that this is the year of mounting up. So I want you to declare prophetically with me and say, I am mounting up. Say it again, I am mounting up. I want to share with us this morning on what I've entitled, Going Through 2021 with the Secrets of God. One with the Secrets of God. We are going through 2021 with the Secrets of God. This morning I announced to you on the 1st of January that God has enabled you to see this day. And even December 31st, 2021, you shall see it in the name of the Lord. Let's go to the book of Isaiah, chapter number 40, verse number 28 to verse number 31. Isaiah, chapter number 40, verse 28 to verse number 31. The Bible says, have you not known, have you not heard the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, neither faints nor is weary. His searching is unsearchable. He gives power to the weak, and to those who have no might, he increases strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. But those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary, they shall walk and not faint. I want you to notice a few things in verse number 29. The Bible says that he gives power to the weak. This is God. He gives power to the weak. Say together with me, God gives power to the weak. Again, we can see that he increases strength. So say with me, God increases strength. I don't know which position you find yourself today. I don't know the position you find yourself having come into 2021. But if you are weak, if you're feeling you don't have enough strength, glory be to God you've come to his house because there is a God who gives power to the weak. And there is a God who increases strength to people that are weary. And today I pray, may that strength come into your life. May that power come into your life. 2020 was not an easy year. It was a year that stretched us. It was a year that troubled us. But thanks be to God that we have his word. He will give us his power. He will give us his strength. And today you are receiving it on the 1st of January. Strength from above. Power from above. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Somebody say, I receive. Now God says that the people that wait on him, the people that wait on him shall renew their strength. So if there is something we need to capture is waiting on God. As we wait on God, something happens is that we are renewed in our strength. We are caused to receive new energy, new power, new stamina. We receive it in our lives. And as we receive it, we are told and we are given a picture that we mount up like eagles. Now there's something I want you to understand. There are different kinds of animals and insects that you find in the Bible. And it's not a mistake that they are there. Because there is great truth and insight that God wants us to receive from animals, from birds, and from insects. 
And you'll be surprised to know that God identifies with the eagle. Not the vulture, not the sparrow, but the eagle. So there are things about the eagle that are very critical for you and I to understand. And as we begin to understand them, then the reality of mounting up will become a picture in our lives. Can I hear you say amen? God tells Moses that he bore the children of Israel on wings like an eagle. This is in the book of Exodus chapter 19 and verse number 4. God himself compares himself and his operations like the eagle. And there are a few secrets I want to share with you of the eagle as we move along. Number one, the eagle lives high up in the Rocky Mountains. The eagle lives high up in the Rocky Mountains. One of the secrets of the eagle is where the eagle chooses to build her nest. The eagle is not like any other bird that builds its nest anywhere. The eagle builds her nest high up in the mountains. And I want you to know if we are going to mount up, our positioning is very critical. We have got to find a rock and place ourselves on that rock. And today I want you to know the rock is Jesus Christ. And as we place ourselves on Christ, we begin to become like the eagle. Can somebody say amen? In the book of Job chapter number 39, the book of Job chapter number 39, verse 27 to verse number 28. Job 39, 27 to 28, the Bible says, Job 29 and verse number, Job 39 and verse number 27. Does the eagle mount up at your command and make its nest on high? So recognize this, the Bible shows us where the eagle places her nest the nest is high up. Verse 28, on the rock it dwells and resides. On the crag of the rock and the stronghold. So I want you to understand this child of God. One of the secrets of the eagle is where the eagle positions herself. And I pray that in the year 2021, you will not position yourself in politics. You will not position yourself with the waves of the day. You will not position yourselves in any other thing. You will find your place in the rock of our salvation. And that is Jesus Christ, the son of the living God. Can I hear you say amen? Number two, this is the second secret of the eagle. The eagle has powerful eyesight that sees very far. The eagle has powerful eyesight that sees very far. If there is something that makes the eagle to be very unique from all the other birds is the ability to see. The book of Job chapter number 39 verse number 27 to verse number 28. Job chapter number 39 verse 27 to verse number 28. The Bible says... Does the eagle mount up at your command and make its nest on high? On the rock it dwells and resides, on the crag of the rock and the stronghold. Now I want you to see verse number 29. And I want us to read it together on the screen. Everyone, from there it spies out the prey. Its eyes observe from afar. Let's repeat that again. From there it spies out the prey. Its eyes observe from afar. This is one of the things that makes the bird called the eagle to be a very unique bird. It has the ability to see very far. Its eyes are so powerful that being high up on the mountain, it is able to see where the prey is. It is able to see where the animals are gathering and the food that it is looking for. In 2021, child of God, if you're going to mount up like an eagle, you must have a vision that enables you to see beyond January, beyond February, beyond November, beyond December, a vision that gives you power to see very far. And I pray for you, even in the challenges that we may face in this year, may you have a vision that sees beyond the problems and beyond the issues of life in the name of Jesus. Can somebody say amen? Put your right hand over your eyes and say, Lord Jesus, Give me vision like an eagle. The third secret about the eagle is that the eagle feeds on fresh meat. The eagle feeds on fresh meat. The eagle feeds on fresh meat. 
The Bible says in Job 39, verse number 27 to verse number 30. Job 39, 27 to 30. Does the eagle mount up at your command and make its nest on high? On the rock it dwells and resides, on the crag of the rock and the stronghold. From there it spies out the prey. Its eyes observe from afar. Now I want us to read verse number 30 together, everyone. Its young ones suck up blood. And where the slain are, there it is. Please see that clearly. The eagle feeds on fresh meat. Fresh meat. It's not like the vulture. The vulture eats dead meat. But the eagle feeds on fresh meat. The Bible says that the young ones of the eagle, they suck up blood. Where is this blood coming from? It is from the slain animals. When the mother eagle picks this, it brings to the young eagles and they eat fresh meat. And that's why their wings are strong. That's why the eagle is powerful. Child of God, I want you to understand the source of your diet will determine the strength and power that you're going to operate with in the year 2021. I declare over your life. May you be one that feeds on fresh meat. May you be one that feeds on fresh revelation, fresh insight from the word of God. If you're together with me, say amen. Number four, this is the fourth secret of the eagle. The eagle has a special training for flying. The eagle has a special training for flying. The eagle just does not fly like any other bird. There is a special training as to how the eagles fly. And the Bible tells us in Deuteronomy 32 and verse number 11, the following words. Deuteronomy 32 and verse number 11. The Bible says to us, as an eagle stirs up its nest, hovers over its young, spreading out its wings, taking them up, carrying them on its wings. We thank God for what science has done. Because science has enables us to understand some of these insights. One of the things that the mother eagle does is that when the eaglets are ready to start to fly, she begins to remove things from the nest. The padding that she had put, the branches and the twigs that had, she had put in the nest, she begins to remove them. That is what the scripture means by stirring up the nest. And as this is being removed, the nest becomes uncomfortable for the eaglets. And then one day she comes and picks out the eaglets and begins to take them on her wings high up into the sky. And then all of a sudden, she closes her wings and allows the eaglets to begin to drop. Where the eaglets are dropping, they're wondering what is happening. What is going on? Why is our mother doing this to us? And they're trying to flap their wings. And as they begin to drop, the mother eagle is watching them. Then she comes swiftly and picks them up again. Takes them high up in the sky and drops them again. She repeats this process until the eaglets begin to learn how to use their wings. I'm here to declare to you, child of God, there are experiences that God will allow. God will allow. Not because he wants to kill you, but because there is a stamina. There is a flying power that he wants to develop in you. There is a resistance. There is a persistence that he wants to develop in you. And I pray for you today. Receive the grace of God over your life. That when this kind of challenges and experiences come, even in this year 2021, you are going to fly higher because because God is making you better than where you are today. Can I hear you say amen? The eagle has a special training. I wish I had the time to carry on with this. But secret number five is this. Number five. The eagle undergoes an individual change process. The eagle undergoes an individual change process. And this is where we get this verse, Isaiah 40 and verse number 31. The Bible says in Isaiah 40, 31, But those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. I want you to look on the screen with me. The Bible says those who wait on the Lord. Say together with me, wait. Now watch me. As the eagle feeds on fresh meat, it becomes healthy and strong, and it begins to pick up weight. It begins to come to a place 
where it finds it difficult to soar higher because it has picked up weight, the beak has developed some culture, it's no longer as powerful as it used to be, then the eagle takes time out. It goes high up into the mountain alone. And on top of this mountain, the eagle begins to go through a change process. Say together with me, a change process. The eagle begins to remove her own feathers out of the body. The eagle by herself. She begins to beat her beak against the rock until the beak begins to fall off. Because the eagle is going through a process. It's a painful one. It's not an easy one. But the eagle will be high up on the mountain for 30 days. During the 30 days, it is not eating anything. It is just depending on the dew that falls on the mountain and falls on the rock. And while it is there, it begins to wait until new feathers begin to grow. Until new beaks begin to grow. And that is what the Bible means when the Bible says waiting on the Lord. When we wait on the Lord, it means there are things that God is dealing with in my life and in your life. It may not be a process for everybody because God will deal with you as an individual. And I pray that in this year 2021, may God begin to deal with you as an individual. Remove the things that have sat on you. Remove the things that you have been saying and eating. Begin to deal with you from the inside because as he does that he begins to renew your strength and after your strength is renewed, after 30 days the eagle now has become light once again the eagle now has developed new wings for another new span of life and the eagle is able to mount up and be able to still soar higher because of the change of process that the eagle has gone through I'm here to let you know if 2021 will make any sense in our lives. We are not entering the same way we were last year. We must go through a change in our lives because until we change, the year will not change for us. I'll say that again. Unless you change, the year cannot change for you. This is a year that demands change. I said this is a year that demands change. Things cannot continue to be the same. We have got to discover secrets of going through 2021. And today I'm here to declare to you, in the living word of God, we have secrets. And when you begin to take these secrets, they transform you and you'll be able to mount up with wings like an eagle. I declare over your life, this year you will mount up by the secrets of God. This year you will mount up by the secrets of God. Lift your hand and say, Lord Jesus... I thank you for every process you will take me through in this year. So when the Bible says waiting on the Lord, understand the picture of the eagle high up on the mountain alone. Now if you miss everything in the message I'm sharing, please don't miss this. The most powerful secret anyone can have in this life are the secrets of God. I'll say that again. The most powerful thing anyone can have are the secrets of God. Oh, please hear me today. It's not even having the number of a rich man, personal number. It's not even knowing politicians and political leaders. If there is any secret that is a game changer in this life, it is the secrets of God. The Bible says in Job 29 and verse number 4, put it up on the screen. And I like it in the King James Version. Please everyone, if you can look up and let's read this together. This is Job. He says, as I was in the days of my youth, when the secret of God was upon my tabernacle. Let's read that again, everyone. As I was in the days of my youth, when the secret of God, Please understand this. What made the life of Job to be different, and I'll show you how different it was, is this. During his youthful days, there was something that was hanging over his life. It is called the secret of God. 
And I pray for you. If there is something that will hang over your life, it will be the secret of God over your life. Can I hear you say amen? I pray for all the young people hearing this message and watching me. May God release his secrets over your life. If there is something that causes men to be different in this world, different in the kingdom of God, it is the secrets of God hanging over their life. Job says when I was a youth, there is something that made the difference in my life. It was the secret of God over my life. Now let me show you how different his life was. Let's now go to the book of Job chapter 1 verse 1 to 5. Job chapter 1 verse 1 to 5. The Bible says there was a man in the land of Uz whose name was Job. And that man was blameless and upright and one who feared God and shunned evil. And seven sons and three daughters were born to him. Now let's read verse 3 together, everyone. Also, his possessions were 7,000 sheep. Stop there. 7,000 sheep. Let's do some mathematics. Let's do some mathematics. Get your calculator out. You'll help me with this. Kondo moja anuzo pesangapi. Muniambi watu wa mungu. Kondo anuzo pesangapi. Talk to me. Kondo anuzo pesangapi. I can't hear. Anuzo? Let's work with 5,000. Multiply 5,000 by 7,000. You know, there are people that think spiritual things don't affect life. Today, I'm going to show you practically from the word of God. Because in 2021, you are going through by the secrets of God. Uh, you did not hear me. I'm saying in 2021, you are going through by the secrets of God. How much is it? Sorry? 35 million was walking around him. 35 million, if it is in today's time. The Bible says the man had 7,000 sheep. And if one sheep is 5,000 shillings, 35 million was hanging around him. It's not the glory of God. I'm here to declare in 2021, you shall operate by the secrets of God. You shall operate by the secrets of God. There are levels that men walk in by the secrets of God. A man who has 35 million walking around, that's another level. How did he reach there? We read it in Job 29 verse 4. He says, when I was a youth, the secret of God was upon my tabernacle. And children of God, if we shall operate in the secrets of God, we must discover the secret of waiting upon him. The Bible says, verse number 3, 3,000 camels. 3,000 camels. This is my thinking as a preacher. In the days of Job, there were no cars. People used the donkeys. And if you wanted to go far, you needed a camel. So a camel is an equivalent of a truck for long distance. The Bible says this man had 3,000 camels. That was the transportation business of Job. A man that operated by the secrets of God. Look at the kind of investment in his life. I'm here to decree and to declare. There is a place the secrets of God can begin to touch your business and the work of your hands and the investments in your life. If we had the time, we'll carry on with the mathematics. But the Bible says he had 500 female donkeys. We are not even told how many were pregnant. But 500 female donkeys were already with him. That's the kind of things that this man had. Why did he have them? It's because in his youth, the secret of God was upon his tabernacle. Somebody better lift your hand and say, Oh God, say, Oh God, let your secrets rest over my life. The Bible says he had a very large household. So that this man, put up the scripture, so that this man was the greatest of all the people of the east. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, the east is not a place. It is a direction. So it means as far as this direction of the world was concerned, there was no man that operated in the level of Job because in the days of his youth, the secret of God was over his life. Oh, today I pray for you that as you begin this year 2021, may the secret of God Rest over your life. 
His sons would go out and feast in their houses, each on his appointed day, and would send and invite their three sisters to eat and drink with them. So it was, when the days of feasting had run their course, that Job would send and sanctify them, and he would rise early in the morning and offer burnt offerings according to the number of them all. For Job said, it may be that my sons have sinned and cast God in their hearts. Thus Job did regularly. This is the second thing I want you to capture in my message. There is a connection between spiritual realities and the physical life that we live. Job operated in this level, not because he was too sharp, but because the secret of God was over his life. He had an altar where he offered burnt sacrifices to God. And the Bible says he was a man of spiritual discipline, and he did this regularly. Listen to me, child of God. In 2021, you cannot afford to backslide. You can only afford to walk with God more closely and more intimately. Decoding the secrets of God. How do we tap into these secrets? Please write these things down. Number one, God has secrets. God has secrets. God has secrets. Deuteronomy 29 and verse number 29. Deuteronomy 29, 29, the Bible says, The secret things belong to the Lord our God, but those things which are revealed belong to us and to our children forever, that we may do all the words of this law. So you can see God has secrets, and those secret things belong to him. Take a look in the book of Isaiah chapter 55 and verse number 8. Isaiah 55 verse 8, the Bible says, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. Number two, write this one down. God can reveal secrets. God can reveal secrets. He has them. And he can also reveal them. He can also make them known. He can be able to show you. The book of Numbers chapter 12 and verse 6. Numbers 12 verse 6. The Bible says, then he said, hear now my words. If there is a prophet among you, I the Lord make myself known to him in a vision. I speak to him in a dream. So this is God revealing himself. Revealing his secrets. Look at the next scripture that is in Daniel 2 and verse 22. The Bible says he reveals deep and the secret things. He knows what is in the darkness and light dwells with him. Say together with me, he reveals deep and the secret things. This year 2021, may you enjoy revelations from God of deep and the secret things. When God reveals his secrets to you, you cannot invest your money in the wrong place. When God reveals his secrets to you, you cannot be conned, you cannot be duped because he shows you deep things that are hidden. Today I decree, may that be your portion. I say, may that be your portion. May that be your portion. May you begin to operate by the secrets of God. Lift your hand and say, oh God. I desire to operate in your secrets. Daniel 2.28, the Bible says, But there is a God in heaven who reveals secrets. And he has made known to King Nebuchadnezzar what will be in the latter days. Your dream and the visions of your head upon your bed were these. In Genesis 41, verse 15 to 16, Genesis 41, 15 to 16, the Bible says, And Pharaoh said to Joseph, I have had a dream, and there is no one who can interpret it. But I've heard it said of you that you can understand a dream to interpret it. So Joseph answered Pharaoh, saying, Let's read those words together. What did he answer? It is not in me. God will give Pharaoh an answer of peace. So we serve a God that is able to reveal things. He's able to reveal things. He's able to reveal things. He's able to reveal to you the kind of trouble the enemy is planning against your children. May you enjoy that kind of favor in your life this year in the name of Jesus. Psalms 103 and verse number 7. Psalms 103 verse 7. Let's read it together on the screen, everyone. He made known his ways to Moses. 
his acts to the children of Israel. Keep the scripture there. When we began the service, Reverend Meshach read for us and asked us to read Psalms 25 and verse number 4, which says, Oh God, teach me your ways and show me your paths. We didn't discuss the message I was going to share. But the moment he read that, I knew a confirmation from God himself that this is the message for you to hear today. Look at what God did for Moses. Moses was shown the ways of God. The children of Israel were shown the acts of God. Acts like splitting the Red Sea. Acts like providing food in the desert. Acts like removing water from a rock. Those are the acts of God. But for Moses, he was shown the ways of God. When he went up on the mountain, God began to show him, this is how I created the world. This is how I caused the oceans to operate. This is how I separated the firmament of the heavens from the firmament of the earth. There was something and a place where Moses operated, where the children of Israel did not operate. I declare over your life in the year 2021, you shall operate by the ways of God. By the secrets of God. Somebody shout, I receive. God made known to Moses his ways. That's why Moses is the author of Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. Because he was being shown the ways of God. Oh, I pray somebody's hearing my message this year. I pray somebody's capturing this in your spirit. When God shows you his ways, you will be operating in life with an added advantage. May that be your portion in 2021. I say may that be your portion in 2021. While others are depending on men, others are depending on politicians, others are depending on the things of this world, you shall operate by the ways of God. He made known to Moses his ways, to the children of Israel his acts. Number three, please write this one down. God reveals his secrets when his demands are met. God reveals his secrets when his demands are met. He does not just reveal them to anybody. He reveals them when his demands are met. We don't know the secrets of God on our terms. We know the secrets of God on his terms. Please look at the scripture on the screen. Psalms 25 and verse number 14. The Bible says the secret of the Lord is with those who fear him. And he will show them his covenant. Let's read the scripture together everyone. The secret of the Lord is with those who fear him. So God reveals his secrets. Please get this clearly. Note on your demands. You don't tell God, show me how this year will be for me because I'm a tither. No. You don't tell God, show me how my life is going to be. Because I've been very good in church. I lift my hands even before they ask me to lift my hands. God shows us his secrets on his demands. He says his secret is with them that fear him. And if there is something that should never leave your life, it is the fear of God. So many people in the house of God, in churches all over, but there is one thing missing out of their life. It is called the fear of God. Kuna watu wamepoteza hofu ya mungu. Na kama umepoteza siri ya mungu katika maisha yako utaiona. Because it is his demand. Please write this one down, number four. Knowing the secrets of God gives you unique advantages in life. Knowing the secrets of God gives you unique advantages in life. That's why we need them. And that's how we'll go through 2021. By the secrets of God. Ooh, I love this story in Luke 2 verse 25. The Bible says, and behold, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. And this man was just and devout waiting for the consolation of Israel. And the Holy Spirit was upon him. Verse 26 says, And it had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. Look at me, everyone. This man called Simeon had something on his life that was called the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit revealed something to him. 
Please get this. For many years, people were waiting for the birth of the Messiah. It was a secret with God. God had said in Genesis, the seed of the woman. Over the scriptures and the centuries, people were waiting for this. People were looking for this. But there was one man. The Bible calls him Simeon. And the spirit of God was upon him. And the scripture records that it had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not die before he saw Jesus as a baby. I want to declare something powerful over somebody today. And this is my declaration for you. May you receive a promise from the Holy Spirit of God. Listen to me. A promise from the Spirit of God preserves your life. Ah, let me try this side. I say a promise from the Spirit of God will preserve your life. I'm talking about operating by the secrets of God. There are people that depend on insurance, assurance, and all those things. And they are good, and they have their place. But there is another dimension you can operate in, whereby the Holy Spirit tells you, you will see the wedding of your granddaughter. And when he has given you that promise, you cannot die. No accident can take you out. No disease can finish you. No witch doctor can remove you. Because the Spirit of God has released a promise on your life. Lift your hand and say, oh God. I desire to operate by the secrets of God. And there are people that live that way on this earth. The Holy Spirit speaks to them, promises them, reveals to them. You are next in line in that category in Jesus' name. Look at verse number 27. Look at what happened. Put it up on the screen. So he came by the Spirit into the temple. Please follow this order. The Spirit was upon him. The Spirit revealed to him. And now the Spirit directs him. I prophesy on your life. In this year 2021, may the Spirit be upon you. May the Spirit reveal to you. And may the Spirit lead you. Can I hear somebody say amen? Please understand this. There is something that partnership with God does in the life of men. Shika yomtu wa mungu. Na uelewe. Sio jambu la kujadiliana. Ni kitu la kushika na kutia katika mwe wako. Ya kwamba upatanishi na mungu. Inaleta tofauti katika maisha wanadamu. Watu ambao wana kuchekelea unenda kanisa kila saa. Unenda mikutano kila saa. Wanapaswa uelewe. Kuna upatanishi na mungu. Inaleta tofauti kwa maisha wanadamu. Don't joke with people that are serious with the things of God. Don't joke at people that are pouring themselves to God. Don't joke with people that have taken their lives and laid them at the altar of God. There are things they are enjoying and operating in that are not common. These are uncommon people. These are not ordinary men. These are people operating by the secrets of God. And I pray that in 2021, you will not just have a desire to build a house, a desire to buy a car, a desire to travel the nations. You'll have a desire to operate by the secrets of God. Holy Spirit was upon him, revealed to him, and then he led him into the temple. And you can finish over this story. I need to move on because of my time. Before I get to the demands necessary to know the secrets of God, I want to show you one man over 200 years ago entered a partnership with God. Let's have the clip right now on Colgate. Put it up on the screen. Watch this on the screen. Let's start from the top and add. And you have bought one of these. You have certainly heard and you have bought one of these products. When you hear the word Colgate, it comes to mind the famous toothpaste. But behind his name, there's a story of faithfulness and partnership with God. William Colgate was born in England in 1973. To run away from poverty, his family traveled to the US and they established themselves in a farm, but the work was hard, and still they didn't recover financially speaking. 
That's when the young man decided to go to the city of New York. His mother was a Christian. And when he told him that, she opened the Bible and told him to read out loud the verse of Malachi 3.10. This was the only advice his mother gave to him before he traveled. That from everything that would come to his hand, he would separate the, the tithe to God. In the journey, he met the captain of the boat, who was also Christian, and they together made a prayer, and he told the young man, be a good man and give your heart to Christ. Give to God all that belongs to him. Make an honest work, and God will prosper you. And he even prophesied, someone will be the main manufacturer of soap in New York. Those words stayed, remained in the mind of William Colgate. As he arrived in New York, he made a vow with God based on the vow of Jacob that he read in the Bible. If you will be with me and keep me in this journey and give me bread to eat and clothes and in peace return to the house of my father, the Lord will be my God and this rock will be the house of God and of everything that you give me, I'll give you the tenth. In 1804, he found a job in a manufacturer of soap. He began to attend a church in his neighborhood, and as soon as he received the first salary, he gave the tithe. Colgate had a spirit of entrepreneur, and he called his boss's attention, who decided to make a partnership with him. But the true partner of William was God, who made him grow and prosper even more. In 1813, he bought the part that belonged to his partner and gave the name of the business Colgate. As God would honor him, he sought to honor God even more in his tithes. He would give 10% and then 20% and 30% and even more later on. The life of William Colgate was to serve the Most High with his wealth. He invested millions in the work of God in sending missionaries all over the world schools and universities who taught the Word of God. Two hundred years has gone by and God is still honoring the partnership that He did with God. Today, the brand name Colgate is known all over the world with a variety of products. Now, every time you see this name, you will not only remember the toothpaste, but also the man who had a partnership with God. Let us clap our hands and thank God for that testimony. <laughs> Say together with me, partnership with God. Say it again, partnership with God. This is a testimony of somebody who operated by the secrets of God. I know many of us here in Eldoret, we know of KFC. How many know of KFC? Ikuko Rupa Mall. KFC. Let me see your hand. If you don't know of KFC, I want you to go to Rupa Mall and see KFC. KFC, they sell fast food chicken. Fast food chicken. But I was surprised while I was preparing this message that the very owner of KFC, the founder, also had a partnership with God. And I was able to find on the internet a part of an interview where he spoke personally in 1979, 1979, before he died in 1980, and he talked of his partnership with God. Let's play that one, and God's people see. Then I'll bring my message to an end. Restaurants. At five years old, he lost his father. At 16, he dropped out of school. At 17, he was fired from four jobs. At 18, he got married and became a railroad conductor. At 19, he became a father to a little girl. At 20, his wife left him and took their one-year-old baby daughter with her. At 22, he joined the army, applied to law school, and faced rejection after rejection from school and the jobs he was at. He then became an insurance salesman another failure to be added to his messy resume. He decided to be a cook and a dishwasher at a small cafe. At 65 years old, he retired. 
On the first day of his retirement, he received a check from the government for $105. What a slap in the face. How could he survive on a $105 monthly budget, he thought, at such an old age? Feeling like a total failure, he decided to commit suicide. He sat under a tree, writing his suicide letter and will. Then all of a sudden he thought of writing instead what he would have accomplished had he had the choice to start his life all over. He realized there was so much he hadn't done yet. One thing he realized that he could do like no one else. Actually, he could do it better than everyone else. That was cooking. Cooking the best chicken anyone had ever tasted. He borrowed $87 to buy a fryer and his recipe ingredients. He lived on his unique fried chicken recipe, trying to sell it door to door to his neighbors in Kentucky, as well as trying to license it to restaurants. He was rejected yet again, 1,009 times from the restaurants he tried to license his recipe to. The 1,010th restaurant gave him his yes moment. KFC was born. At 88, Colonel Sanders became a multi-billionaire and KFC the second biggest food empire. Now, KFC has over 20,000 locations in 123 countries. I mean, you know, you prayed that God would give you a, a tithing uh, person, but I understand the Colonel vowed to God to tithe even before he had accepted Christ as his Savior when he first started Kentucky Fried Chicken. He said, is that true, Colonel? That's right. I prayed to God that he'd make this thing a success. I had done so many things in the life and it played out. It looks like well, the ferry, built, ferry boat business and went out of business when they built a bridge across the river. And uh, my lighting plant business, selling gas lights, when Delco come in, or they had electric <laughs> lights for the farmer, I couldn't sell mine. <laughs> yeah. So things just went bad for me all the way along, but I always grabbed up something that I thought was useful and good. And I uh, wanted to be sure that this chicken looked like it was my last chance, because I'd getting pretty well up in years. And if this chicken would make good, I'd see that God got his part of it. And yeah. I've given away millions of dollars since then that's come in as a result of God's leading me in my business, no question about it. I just tell him, Brother Rogers, I never, the people say you want, to, want anything, pray for it. I, I don't pray for anything. I know what I'm giving God my tithe, doing all I can for him, so my prayer is every, every night is to thank God for all the blessings I've received all during the day, the mm. years. And just think, I've here I am enjoying good health, practically, of course, my eyesight's getting bad now, and my hearing is failing a little bit, but uh, there's time for it to begin to wear out. When to <laughs> and I think I've reached that time. I still think that God has done a great thing. I don't pray for him to give me any better eyesight than I got. Because mm. it's his will. Let it, let it just do, be awful thankful that he's led me as far as he has. I'll tell you, at 89 years of age, I think he's doing very, very well, don't you? <laughs> what a Moral of the story? You have what it takes to be successful. Don't give up. Let's clap our hands and thank God for that testimony. Now maybe for some of us, his accent was too deep. But we'll be able to put up after this message a link to the full testimony. And you can be able to watch it. Demands necessary to know the secrets of God. I close on this. Number one, be born again. These are demands necessary to know the secrets of God. If you'll operate by the secrets of God, you must be born again. John chapter 3 verse 3, Jesus answered and said to him, Most assuredly I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Matthew 13 and verse 10 to 11, And the disciples came and said to him, Why do you speak to them in parables? He answered and said to them, Because it has been given to you, to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it has not been given. Both of these men, the testimony, William Colgate and Colonel Sanders,
The two of them were born again men. And their testimonies still speak. Cornel Sanders, that was in 1979 that we just watched. At that particular time, KFC was making two billion US dollars per year. Cornel Sanders died in 1980 at the age of 90. And KFC had 6,000 outlets in 48 countries. Today, 2021, this is from Wikipedia and Forbes. This is in the public domain. You can check for yourself. KFC is making 27.9 billion US dollars with 24,000 branches in 145 countries. And in Kenya, there are 17 outlets. This is what partnership with God can do for many years. May your story be next in line in Jesus' name. Number two, these are the demands to know the secrets of God. Practice the fear of God. Practice the fear of God. Psalms 25, 14 says, The secret of the Lord is with those who fear Him, and He will show them His covenant. Those that fear Him. Now the question is this, what is the fear of God? Tunapozungumzia hofu ya mungu, tunamanisha nini? Look at this verse, Proverbs chapter 8. Return the verse, Proverbs 8 and verse number 13. The Bible says, the fear of the Lord is to hate evil, pride and arrogance and the evil way and the perverse mouth I hate. So the fear of God is this in practical terms. Number one, hating evil. Tunapozungumzia hofu ya mungu ni chuki ndani yako kutokana na maovu. Let everybody be a liar but not you. Let everybody be corrupt but not you because you hate evil. Number two, hate pride. Hate pride. Number three, hate arrogance. Number four, hate the evil way. Mapito yanjia. Ambayo yanongoza watu kutenda maovu. You must hate that. You must hate it. You must hate it. Many young people ask me, Pastor, where is it written in the Bible? Thou shall not go to a club. Thou shall not go to a disco. There is your answer. Hate the evil way. People don't gather there to worship and pray. They don't gather there to study the word. They gather there to do evil. And the Bible says, hate the evil way. Number five, hate the perverse mouth. Hate the perverse mouth. Watch a kuwa mtu ambaya nasema, mini kikasirika na ongeanga vile nataka. That is the perverse mouth. You must hate it. That is the fear of God. Look at this scripture, Proverbs 3.32. Proverbs 3.32, for the perverse mouth, sorry, for the perverse person is an abomination to the Lord. But his secret counsel is with the upright. The secret counsel of God is with the upright. Number six, you must be an upright person in your thoughts, actions, and words. You must be an upright person in your thoughts, actions, and words. Number three, how do we get the secrets of God? What are the demands of God? Number three, be filled with the Spirit of God. Be filled with the Spirit of God. We already saw from this man Simeon, the Holy Spirit was upon him. The Holy Spirit revealed to him and the Holy Spirit led him. We saw that in his life. 1 Corinthians 2 verse 9 to 10. 1 Corinthians 2 verse 9 to 10. The Bible says, but as it is written, I has not seen, no ear heard, nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. But verse 10 says this, but God has revealed them to us by his spirit. So the things that God has prepared, the Holy Spirit reveals them to us. I pray for you in 2021. May the Spirit reveal to you some things. I say may the Spirit reveal to you some things. May the Spirit reveal to you in the name of Jesus. These are the demands to operate in the secrets of God. And number four, be like a little child. Be like a little child. If you'll see the operations of God, you must be like a little child. Jesus compared the operations of the Spirit to the wind in John chapter 3. He said, the Spirit is like the wind. He moves. You don't know where He's coming from and you don't know to where He's going. So for us to enjoy that benefit in the kingdom of God, we must be like little children. Matthew 18 verse 3 says, Assuredly I say to you, unless you're converted and become as little children, you will by no means enter the kingdom of heaven. Luke 10, 21 says, In that hour, Jesus rejoiced in the Spirit and said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that you have hidden these things from the wise and prudent and revealed them to babes. Even so, Father, for it seemed good in your sight. So when you are like a little child, 
That means you have an attitude that is quick to learn, an attitude that is quick to forgive, an attitude that is quick to move on from injustices and stuff like that. You are able to capture the secrets of God because they are secrets that to the natural eye, they look like foolishness. But in the kingdom, they are powerful. For example, praying in tongues. Kwa mtu mwenye amesoma, meishi miaka mingi, anangalia nona watu anafanya bra 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 Inonekana kama ni utoto. But when you are like a little child, in that thing that looks like foolishness, is the power of God displayed. Demands for meeting the secret of God. Number five, which is the last one. Be submitted to faithful servants of God. Be submitted to faithful servants of God. 1 Corinthians 4 verse 1 and 2. 1 Corinthians 4 verse 1 and 2, the Bible says, Let a man so consider us as servants of Christ and stewards of the mysteries of God. Moreover, it is required in stewards that one be found faithful. You must be submitted to faithful servants of God because servants of God carry mysteries. Another name for mysteries is secrets. So the secrets of God are in his servants. And these servants are faithful. Faithful to God. Faithful to his word. Faithful to the demands of scripture for servants of God. When you are submitted to this kind of men and women of God, the secrets of God will be released into your life. Five demands that I've spoken of. And then we pray. Number one, be born again. Number two, practice the fear of God. Number three, be filled with the spirit of God. Number four, be like a little child in your attitude. And number five, be submitted to faithful servants of God. I pray that in the year 2021, you shall operate in the secrets of God. Have you received something from this teaching this morning? Have you received something from this teaching this morning? I want you to close your Bible and your notebook. And for a moment, lift your two hands where you are and begin to ask God to reveal secrets in your life that will give you an advantage in 2021. Let's stand up on our two feet. Let's stand up on our two feet. And everyone, I want you right now to commit and connect with God that the secrets of God will be revealed in your life. Inuwa mikono yako mtu wa mungu na mzungu mzie buwana sasa. Mwambie roo mtakatifu ni funulie siri zako. Mwaka huu wa 2021 ni tembe na siri za mungu. I want to operate by the secrets of God. I want to operate by the secrets of God. Lift up your voice and pray. Lift up your voice and pray. Lift up your voice and pray. You have seen it practically. In the life of William Colgate, you've seen it practically. In the life of Colonel Sanders, there is something that God can reveal to you that can become a game changer in your life. And right now, connect with Him. Connect with Him in prayer. Connect with Him in prayer. Connect with Him in prayer. Go ahead and begin to pray in tongues. And as you pray, let the Holy Spirit reveal to you, reveal to you all that God has prepared for them that love Him and them that are called according to His purpose. May the Holy Ghost begin to reveal. Begin to reveal, begin to reveal. In this year 2021, I pray that the Holy Ghost shall reveal over your life, over your business, over your family, secrets of God. You will operate by the secrets of God. You will operate by the secrets of God. You will operate by the secrets of God. You'll operate by the secrets of God. Oh Lord Jesus, I pray, reveal by your spirit, reveal by your spirit over your people, over the work of their hands. Secrets of God secrets that will give them an advantage in life secrets that will give them an advantage in life in the name of Jesus 2021 will not be like any other year we shall operate by divine secrets by divine secrets Holy Ghost now in the name of Jesus through dreams through visions by dropping thoughts dropping ideas in the lives of your people we desire to operate by the secrets of God come on church lift your voice and pray lift your voice and pray. God is releasing to you divine secrets, divine secrets, divine secrets, divine secrets that will change your life, change your story. In the name of Jesus, Holy Ghost, hear the prayer of the church today and release beneficial secrets, beneficial secrets, beneficial secrets in the life of your people, beneficial secrets, beneficial secrets, beneficial secrets, beneficial secrets in the lives of your people. We shall not struggle any longer. We shall not go around in circles any longer. We 
desire your secrets. We desire a revelation, an idea from God, an idea from God, a project from God. Release it over your people that in 2021 we shall operate, we shall operate by the secrets of God, by the secrets of God, by the secrets of God, by the secrets of God. We are going through 2021 by the secrets of God. We are going through 2021 by the secrets of God. Thank you, Jesus. Lift your hands, everyone, and say, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. I thank you for revelation from your word. From your word. Today. I stand in your house. I stand in your house. In the name of Jesus. In the name of I receive the grace. I receive the grace. To wait upon God. To wait upon God. In prayer. In prayer. And in the study of the word. And in the study of the word. As I will be waiting. As I will be waiting. In prayer. In prayer. And in the word. And in the word. Holy Spirit of God. Reveal to me. Reveal to me. Divine. Divine. Beneficial, Beneficial. Secrets. secrets as I partake, as I partake. Of, the of the secrets of God. 2021, 2021. Will, be a year will be a year that I will mount up, I will mount up and so higher, and so higher in, the name of Jesus. in the name of Jesus. In all my affairs, in all my affairs I, shall operate I shall operate by the wisdom of God. By the wisdom of God. I shall be different. I shall be different. I shall be I shall, I, shall I shall enjoy the favor of God, the favor of in, God. Jesus name. in Jesus' name. Oh God, oh God, oh God. Oh God. Oh God. Your, word has said, your word has said, my sheep, my sheep. Know, my voice. know my voice. This year, this year I, receive I receive the grace of God, the grace of God. To, be obedient. to be obedient when the Holy Spirit, when the Holy Spirit speaks, speaks, to me. speaks to me in dreams. In dreams. In in visions, in visions, and in my thoughts, and in my thoughts, whatever I lost, whatever I lost last year, last year, whatever was stolen, whatever was from stolen from me, from me, I decree, I decree in the name of Jesus, in the name of restoration, Jesus, restoration, and demonstration, and demonstration. It, shall it shall follow me in 2021, in 2021, God's word. God's word will not return. Will not return to him void. To to him him void. I still believe. I still believe. And I will receive. And I will receive for a testimony. For a testimony. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Lift your hands and say, I dedicate my life. I dedicate my life. My family. My family. My abilities. My abilities. My resources. My resources. My time. My time. Every month. Every month. Of this year. Of this year. Yeah. I dedicate it. I dedicate it. Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. Bless them. Bless them. Use them. Use them. And prosper them. And prosper them. For your glory. For your glory. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Clap your hands and give God praise as we receive our pastor to come and continue the service. Clap your hands and give God Hallelujah. praise. Thank you.